Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. And in the last bubbling, we took a visual look at the particle emitter, the new Zim emitter, to make things like fire, flames, snowflakes, fireworks, that kind of stuff. Now, in this one, we'd like to take a look at the coding and how to code that stuff. All right, let's, let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And we'll scroll down here and just take a quick refresh of what we were looking at. The particles is right here. Ooh, neat, huh? So we'll click in. And the last, in the last um, bubbling, I was showing you these particles, and there was something niggling at the back of my mind, and that was the frame rate was dipping into the sort of the mid 50s, and yet all throughout our development. <laughs> We had a frame rate rate of 60 um, for all of these. And so what had happened is we were, as, as we were capturing this, we were also uploading previous bubblings using the same browser system. So we were uploading videos to YouTube, and I think that was affecting the frame rate. But anyway, as you can see, that's just a fine 60. Now, it's not to say that there won't be uh, performance issues with this. We did find here with the Snowflakes one, for instance, you can click on these and bring up the Snowflake. Uh, but what we did initially was put an on, on on the emitter. So the emitter is a container, and we said contain, you know, whatever container dot on uh, click, and we found that that bogged. So these all of a sudden started going really slowly and stuff. And and so there there will be performances. This is the canvas render that we're using. You can launch these types of things as well in a WebGL render using Stage GL and Create JS. And that's in the next next version. Next version, which is here sort of, but just not officially launched on the CDN of Create JS. So we'll be showing you some examples on the GPU, and that has three to five times uh, faster speed and stuff like that. So there, just a little bit of an update here. Now what I'd like to do is take you into the code. Uh, let's take you into the code of this one, and we'll show you how to, how to code an emitter just right from the start. But uh, the code can be found here, for instance, Plidink, and you can, it, it's well documented and so forth. But what I would like to do is uh, take you through the code in Atom. So here we have it in Atom. And we're using Zim 5, so that's the new version of Zim out on CloudFront. The site will be along later, uh, maybe a month or two, we're animating it and all sorts of things, fun things like that, okay? Uh, also collecting five um, sub-sites, in a sense, for, for things. So all sorts of things on the go there. And, but here, let's just go, what I've done is I've commented out the, 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 the code for the rest of that, and let's just make an emitter right here. So increase our font so we can see what we're doing here. Var emitter is equal to a new zim dot emitter, and in round brackets. Um, oh, gosh, I was going to swap this up so it automatically makes a particle for us if we don't put in a particle. I like that. I like the ability to just say, hey, give me a new uh, object here without any parameters and have it have it make a base one. In this case of the emitter, maybe I'll just I'll slip that in a bit later, but in this case of the emitter, we make a new zim.circle, for instance. Now this can emit any display object, so this could be a bitmap or a, or a sprite, etc text. Okay, so a new Zim circle, and we will make it, say, 10, and frame dot blue. How about? Okay, we need to add this to the stage as well, dot add to stage, and then let's take a look at it. Oh, okay. So up in the left-hand corner. So that's zero, zero. Let's center reg that. That might be a little bit better. Uh, dot center reg, like so. And do that again. So there it is. You can see that it's emitting out at a default speed and angle, or well, angle of 360. And then it's got gravity affecting it. Okay, let's see what that looks like without gravity. Now, to play around with this, it's best to convert this to a Zim Duo configuration object, like so. 
So that will be the obj colon. And then we can say comma gravity, which is default 9.8, is 0. So now we have no gravity. And then let's take a look and see how this looks now. So there it is, shooting out and no longer falling uh, due to gravity. And we can change the speed at which this is shooting. This is that's called the force. So by default, I think the force is 5 or something like that. Force colon 0.1, for instance, uh, comma. And check this out. Oh, hardly moving. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> yeah, that one hardly moving. Sorry, let's try a force of one now. <laughs> it might be a little bit easier to see. And refresh here. Yeah, now it is, it's going out with a force of one, but it looks like it's not going as far. And that's because there's a decay time. So the decay time, we didn't change that. It's just because the force wasn't very much, it's decaying right here rather than shooting across the screen and decaying later. So let's um, check that out. There's not only a decay time, sorry, but there's also a life. So it's the life that will affect this and a bit of the decay time, which we'll see after. And refresh here. And there we go. You can see that that's... Uh, going out to the edge and decaying just as it's sort of getting at the edge and it decays relatively quickly and it's shrinking and fading. So we call those shrink and fade. If we don't want to uh, shrink, for instance, we can say shrink colon false like that and have a view of that. Now when it gets to the edge, it just fades out. It doesn't, it doesn't shrink. We can also specify how how many of these shoot out. Well, maybe we have mentioned decay time, so let's see the decay time. Decay time colon 4,000. Now this will get added at the end of the life. So there will be a thousand milliseconds of time when it's not decaying and then 4,000 milliseconds of time when it decays. So now it's decaying earlier. Let's bring back the shrink. Let's get rid of that and keep the default shrink. And try that again. So there it is, decaying. And it takes a while now to decay and shrink. Very nice. We can adjust the... Um, how many we shoot out. So that is the interval that we're shooting. And so by default, I think it's something like 20, I think. So if we bring that up to 500 milliseconds, comma. Now there's less uh, shooting out because they're going every 500 milliseconds. And we can change that. Uh, this accepts a ZIMV value, 500 comma 1000, for instance. Now it will shoot out either at 500. Well, let's adjust that to say 200 so we can really see that. Or, yeah, sure, 200 milliseconds or 1000 milliseconds. So that's a second. So there's sometimes they're going every second and sometimes they're going every two seconds. We can make a, that a range. So this is called a ZIMV value where it accepts one of three things. In the first case, it was an array of options. Now min and max. Now it's a, a ZIMRAND object, which has min, max, um, integer, and negative as well. Can, uh, you can view or information or see see information hear information and view information about that in a prior bubbling um, couple back about the zim v values new with zim five v being uh, roman numeral for five by the way <laughs> okay so we've got a min of two hundred and a max of one thousand and this is now a range. So now it's just sort of randomly making particles at any of those speeds. 
and many of these values will accept that kind of thing. Let's just bring that back to something like I don't know, every 100 milliseconds. The other thing we can do is say how many to send out. So we can say num colon, let's um, shoot out three each time. Maybe we better increase this then to 500. Let me see what that looks like. Can we see it? Uh, not really. Let's just go to make that one second so we can really see that one. Yeah, so can you see that? Now it's shooting three particles out at every time it every time it goes. Okay, uh, we'll bring that back to <laughs> quote three. <laughs> bring that back to, to one again. Uh, well, what else? Um, how about we see different particles going? So, and we, <laughs> there's so many options. We could just sit here for like hours doing this, uh, but I'm introducing you a few. Um, maybe we'll just keep the introduction one relatively short and then we'll go in and play around with it more and more and more. Uh, okay, so the new circle, we can also make, uh, for instance, a rectangle here. Comma. Oh, let's leave the circle over there. I'll make this the rectangle. Rectangle. Uh, 20, comma, 20. And frame dot pink. Okay, so now we're, we're passing in a Zim V value here. It's an array of, uh, so that we can pick options from the array. We're going to either pick a rectangle or a circle each time. And we have a browser. Oh, a little bit boring. Okay, so now we're getting uh, rectangles and circles, but they're not going very quickly. So let's bring that back down to, I think 20 is about the fastest we can go. We can emit more particles um, as, as we go, but there she be. Cool, huh? And how about the angle of this thing as well? So you can play with the force that it's going. We, we set it at, at one. Uh, you can randomize that as well. You can say make that force between uh, one and 10 or something like that. The angle is there as well, angle. Uh, let's just set an angle of zero and see what that does. Ooh, cool. So you can imagine that for laser beams or bullets or whatever. So if you wanted these to not be just a line of, of that kind of stuff, then you can um, decrease the interval, I suppose. Will that do it? It might, oh, increase the force as well. So five. Let me come back and check this out. Oh yeah. Okay. So you know what? That's pretty good, I suppose. Um, let me just show you the uh, one more thing. The rand, like I mean, there's there's lots of basics as well. And, and what I'd like to do is just put this one on pause while we've introduced all this stuff and got it started. And then we'll make a, a coding with the emitter two, probably a coding with an emitter three and possibly uh, <laughs> an emitter four, who, who knows. Okay, anyway, let's just uh, bring in the random here. So random colon. Uh, this is an array of properties that we can randomize, any, any properties of it. So how about color, for instance? color colon and then the value here is a zim v value so this can uh, as long as this uh, evaluates to something um, we can choose from colors so frame dot green comma frame dot blue by the way these are just html colors frame dot yellow and frame dot no way. Pink, I guess. We do green, blue, yellow, pink. Okay, fine. Hey, Easter colors. And comma. 
All right, so now what it's going to do is it's going to apply the color, any of these colors, to these shapes or the particles that we're passing out. And let's see. So now I've got a bunch of random colors. Now, if you want a, uh, just one more thing, we talked about angle. How about a range of an angle? So we could pick from angles. Um, that might be kind of neat to see. So we can say, hey, go 45 degrees, go, uh, well, start with zero, go zero. That's along the x-axis like that. Go 45, go minus 45, go 90, and uh, minus 90 or something like that. Okay, so that, that would pick from any of those angles. Let's see what that looks like. Doop, 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 doop. All right, so that's going all those angles. It's almost hard to say. <laughs> Should I just turn on the trace? Uh, we'll leave the trace for later. If, if we trace this, then we can actually see the lines of these go, but that will be in the next time, okay? Uh, but if we wanted a, a, a range of these, like, um, if we wanted to say, hey, just go off to the right there, then we could say, go from a min of minus 90, comma, a max of uh, 90. Well, why don't we swap this around? How about we go from a min of minus 180? So that's all the way back to the left and a max of <laughs> zero. Does that work? <laughs> we could have done this another way. Uh, let me refresh that. And now they're they're all shooting up. Okay. And once again, if we uh, if we lessen this force, like call that a force of one, and bring back in gravity instead of a gravity of zero nine point eight, which is the default there, then we can have them shoot up at a force of one, and then be pulled down, and we start approaching the possibly caught, uh, well, oops, didn't shoot up very much, did it? It's just like a little bump going up, and then, uh, so maybe we can make that more like a five. Check this out. There, so now they're kind of going up, and then falling down, we're sort of approaching fireworks. We might want some trails on, on that. Isn't that cool? Oh, uh, one thing with the rand, we had mentioned um, color. There's also, we could, and sometimes I'll drop this down if we're going to randomize a bunch of things. Uh, we can also randomize, for instance, rotation, co colon, and um, well, we'll just, <laughs> just make it 45. What this will do is it will just be 45 degrees. So now all these things are 45 degrees. And you'll see that we now have diamonds coming out instead of uh, rectangles. So you see how the diamonds are like that. And we can pass in an animation to animate that thing as it goes, but why don't we um, why don't we pick up there in the next one? We'll leave this as mm, the basics. And also perhaps just to, so that you know, there is in the Zim site here, the doc section, if you type emit for emitter, and let's F11 that and increase the scale a little bit. Here are all of the things that we can do with the emitter as well. So we've, we've just gone to the Zim site, zimjs.com, clicked on the docs and typed in emit, and we arrive at our Zim emitter. And if you're sort of dying to try out more of these things before the next bubbling, although the next bubbling is gonna be pretty soon, um, then you're welcome to look at the docs here. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. This has been a What's Bubbling at Zim with a particle emitter, taking a look at the code, and we'll come back and, and uh, do more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very exciting. We've got things like uh, sinks, which uh, track the particles. Uh, wiggle, we'll see wiggle, how to move that sink around or change values dynamically. Okay, talk to you later. Ciao.